Hi guys, very welcome to my number two of my Houdini Connects tutorial series. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use data from another application inside of Houdini to be able to automate the processes. In this case, we will continue with the previous setup and those are the steps that we'll go through together. First, we export data with a Lambic file from any application, then we extract um, the data inside of Houdini and then we just control um, any parameter with, with this data. Okay, let's get started. In this case, I will use Maya. As you see here, we have a curve and we have a motion path here and this U value is just showing the position of the server on the curve. We will extract this data, bring this data to Houdini and automate this animation process with this data. Okay, let's first bring out the information with a Lambic file. I create the cube. I rename it to um, curve underscore u to who and now I use a node editor normally it's look like that we just bring first with middle mouse button our cube inside of node not editor and now we need also the motion path just select in this add to graph with one and three you can expand the node and we connect now the u information of u value of motion path to the translate x of of the cube. Okay, now let's export this cube as a limic file. An outline and just select your cube. Go to cache, a lambic export selection as a lambic. Uh, we're using time slider and also the important thing to, to have is the world space. You can just ignore another information here. Just export. I already exported um, M2 who curve U. Just press select your file and just export the information. After you export it, we will bring it to Houdini. I already did it here. Okay, we go here, File, Import, Alembic Scene. We navigate to this folder, grab our exported Alembic file, press Accept and Import. And I think I ah here is it. As you see, if you press F, we have this I have also rotation um, connected to another attribute, but in your case you will have only X information. Okay, now we have this transformation. Now I will use the fetch node to be able to fetch this information. We just navigate to fetch object here and this will be our U1. Just look 
I graph this one. I just take this and accept. And as you see now, if you just press the info button, you will see that we have just all values. If we play here as transformation. Now we have to grab this information and write it to, to any point attribute or you can write it to detail attribute. In this case we will use point attribute. I delete the sphere, we don't need it. And we use here Python. Um, Python node. First thing to do, we have to first create a point here and we need an attribute. I use attribute Wrangle to create this point attribute. We connect our point to the first input here and we write F is for float, add curve U and semicolon. You can type the name wherever you want. Save. I'm sorry, I think I do it again. F, F at curve U. Okay, now we have this. As you see here, if you look at the spreadsheet, we have this curve U and also the position attribute. And now we just bring this point inside our Python. You see, if, if we just disconnect it, we have one point here and nothing here. I mean, you see we have no points here, but if we connect it, we get also one point here. Okay, now we have to write a bit code here. Um, don't worry if you're not familiar with Python, it's very simple. I will show you what we right now. Uh, first we get the fetch node with who dot node and giving the path of the object. Then we just grab the transformation value. In this case we have x, y and z and for x we have index 0 and with this loop with setting the attribute that we already created with a wrangle to this value. Let's just copy and paste it. Okay, and now, as you see here, if I grab my animation, we successfully extract the x value to this curve u. This is our point attribute, and now you can connect this attribute or connect any attribute to this value. In this case, um, we have already this control attribute and we just connect now. Just press Alt E and 
and we'll write down now the expression here. It will be point because we we need point attribute. Then we need a path to our um, fetch node. We go out. Um, from this fetch node, or we go out from our control node here, then we use fetch2. Sorry, fetch2. Then we go inside fetch2, and we have a Python 1. I think it's a Python point to check it because I cannot close it here because if I close then Houdini will wait a second, maybe I can do it this way. And if you go now and fetch oh okay anyway. I have to save it now. Okay, do it again. Just um, if you type it here, you get also the, the help information. I just type it here, and after I show you what I what I did, just we write. Um, I don't need it anymore. We'll write point, and as you see, if you open the, you um, you will get this information. Now we need a path. You see. We go now to our fetch2. Now it's showing the nodes inside of fetch2. We need a Python 1. Okay, now in comma, we, um, we need now the point number. In this case, we have only one point and the index, index is 0. Now we need an attribute. Attribute is curve u. And now we need the index. If you have, for example, a vector, we have three, uh, you will have three values, but we only have um, float. The index will be zero. Okay, that's it. As you see here, if you grab your your timeline now, we successfully connected this attribute from Python to control attribute. If you look now through the camera node, you see our tail successfully following character now we can just make longer okay guys that's it for this tutorial thank you very much for watching if you have any questions just ask me if you like this tutorial please leave a comment don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one bye